Powerful modern aviation allows solving various tasks on the battlefield, ensuring the achievement of operational, tactical, and strategic goals. Washington understands this as no one else, and therefore many years has been trying to maintain its superiority in the sky. The U.S. now has a total of 3,511 combat aircraft, which, by the way, is two and a half times more than Russia. This country is the only owner of two fighters of the fifth generation, and what's also important is actively working on the machine of the next generation. In addition, it's the American aircraft that are the most exported in the world. Today, we'll talk about how successful the Raptor and Lightning II were, what to expect from the sixth generation, and what the future holds for American aviation in general. This is Military News. Let's go. By 2030, the U.S. Air Force fleet will undergo dramatic changes, reducing diversity, speeding up upgrades, and short-term reductions in procurement. That's the new military strategy. The Chief of Staff, General Charles C. Brown Jr. said, we're in a state of transition. He also talked about what military aviation should become in the next decade. According to preliminary plans, the U.S. Air Force will reduce the composition of its fleet from seven types of fighters to four plus one. But what kind of aircraft are we talking about? They will include the familiar fourth-generation models F-15 and F-16. The first, namely the F-15EX, is an upgrade of the outdated F-15C, with a higher speed and payload. The second is a versatile model with excellent flight hackles and at the same time the most popular fighter in America. Note that both airships are low cost and easy to operate. Another interesting specimen that made the tactic list is the A-10 or the Beard Fighter. Its numbers of course will be reduced from 281 to 218 units. The remainder will receive new equipment and wings which will keep them in service until the mid-2030s. The backbone of the U.S. Air Force fleet will be the F-35A, 220 of which will enter service within the next five years. The Lockheed Martin project is equipped with the most powerful AFAR, active phased array radar, and a wide range of weapons, including cannon and nuclear shells, although the speed of procurement still depends on the readiness of the Block 4 program. This begs the question. What about the F-22? Has it been forgotten? The Raptor will not join the ranks of the aviation of the future. The reason for this is that the fighter's price is too high. In addition, considered a cutting-edge novelty in the 2000s, it's now, at times, inferior to its fourth-generation counterparts. The plane cannot fly at minimum altitude, in automatic terrain avoidance mode, and its radar is not capable of mapping the terrain. In today's environment, with the advent of air defense systems like the S-400 and S-500, the need for these modes is very noticeable. In addition, the F-22 is only capable of attacking targets with pre-installed coordinates. The Raptor fleet itself is rather small. Initially, it was planned to produce 750 aircraft. However, in the end, only 187 rolled off the assembly line. Contractor Lockheed Martin suggested upgrading the fighters, adding equipment and sensors similar to those installed on the F-35, and also to improve the hull coating. But so far, all the improvements remain only on paper. No other major upgrades of the F-22 are expected. According to the plan, it'll serve its 25-year life, and in the 2030s, it'll be gradually removed from active service. Unfortunately, the plane's owners thought was neither yours nor ours, i.e., they also didn't export the sample. Although several countries, including Israel, Japan, and Australia, were interested in buying this model. However, the government imposed a ban on sales of F-22, due to fears that the unique developments could be stolen. The reason for such doubts was the situation with the Chinese J-10, which bears a striking resemblance to the American F-16. 
Washington did not seriously focus on the Raptor and instead preferred to place a bet on the Next Generation Fighter, Next Generation Air Dominance, NGAD, using digital technology and the ability to fly unmanned. This project is being developed according to a new strategy using digital design and computer modeling. These innovations have solved the problem of excessively long work on each new design. For example, 15 years passed from the moment of the first flight of F-22 up to its introduction into the Air Force. The NGAD will be produced in small batches of brand new modifications every 5 to 10 years. As for the rest of the aircraft, about 44% of the U.S. Air Force fleet now flies with expired service life. Soon, the tired F-16CD, C-130H, and early model UAVs, RQ-4A Block 30, will get a well-deserved retirement. Already by 2026, Washington plans to write off 421 fighters and replace them with just 304 new ones, resulting in a net reduction of 117 aircraft, the largest reduction in the Air Force since the early 2010s. Riding off 201 aircraft and unmanned aerial vehicles should save the country $1.37 billion. All of the money raised will be used to develop new projects and modernize the existing ones. Thus, the U.S. Air Force is finding a balance between today's requirements and those of the future. They actively invest in the modernization of already existing and time-proven vehicles of the fourth generation and slowly but surely develop fundamentally new technologies such as NGAD. As for the F-22 and the F-35, the choice was made in favor of economy, simplicity, and convenience, which the slow Lightning II has. And Raptor became an intermediate link, which certainly contributed to the development of national aviation, but did not get air supremacy. In the next decade, the aircraft I mentioned will be joined by unmanned aerial vehicles in the creation of which America has also an advantage. What do you think of American aviation and its development strategy? Hurry up and leave your comments below the video, like it, and don't forget to subscribe.